Hello everybody, Dokana Sets here. Today we are back with another animation analysis video. Ladies and gentlemen, I uh, was kind of not really remembering that we were going to get another monthly Dokkan Fest until a couple days ago when I was talking about the Gammas last time. I was like, yeah, that's basically it for the month. But lo and behold, we have our brand new monthly Dokkan Fest, which is the Tech Dokkan Fest Bardock from when he, well, fights, quote-unquote, Frieza, right? When he rebels against Frida. Frida? <laughs> when he gets bu bullied by the fajita that I have in my fridge for my leftover dinners tonight. That's right. We're going to take a look at this man's animations as per usual. We're going to watch through them at one times speed all the way through. And then we are going to go ahead and analyze them with the frame by frame. Now for the unfeatured unit, we have basically Team Bardock minus the Bardock. <laughs> Whoa, Team Bardock without the Bardock! <laughs> These guys' animations are very okay. I mean, they are an unfeatured featured unit, so, you know, it's not, like, crazy to be expected. Um, but, you know, they are there. The intro, I will say, I think overall, is easily my favorite animation out of all this. There is a ton of really great stuff in here. So very interesting choices with the intro animation as well. But I think overall, it is easily my favorite one, and I think the best one to be honest with you. I really like the card art choice, by the way. I was really hoping that that would be one of his card arts. I didn't think they would make it the TUR. I thought they would make it the SSR, so I'm actually quite happy about that. Um, but yeah, this is a super attack, basically when he's blasting away the enemy, and then the active skill is when he is about to take on Frieza, talking about, of course, how he's um, you know had the Saiyans under his control for such a long time. I will say, I think that the throw itself is really good in this animation. Um, this is the first time I'll say too, I'm not the biggest fan of the KO screen. I think it's just kind of okay, um, if I'm being 100% honest with you. So let's go ahead and go through these. As per usual, we will go through the unfeatured featured unit since it is in this video. But keep in mind, we have to take this with a little bit more of a lower standard because of course this is not a Dokkan Fest unit, right? This is a unfeatured banner unit. So it's not going to have the same amount of love put in for the animation. So let's go ahead and take a look before we do that. Hydrate or dehydrate, baby. Make sure you take a drink of water as you're watching this video. All right. So let's go ahead and get into it here. We have a fade in from black, as you can see, to the members of the Bardock squad. Interestingly enough, these are literally all of their regular sprites. I'm sure that these are updated for this animation, right, where they look a little bit nicer quality. But these are literally just their regular sprites, except just more HD, right? Um, not a bad choice, and I mean, I guess I understand, but it would have been a lot cooler if they would have done something more original for the beginning, right? Interestingly enough, this is also just a Tora card, um, so technically he is the, like, main unit on this. It doesn't actually have the Ginyu Force even in parentheses for this, I don't think. So... They do all fly forward here, which, again, this is literally just their standard sprite. This literally looks like OG Battlefield if you were around for Dokkan back then. It's kind of what this reminds me of. But yeah, we got some anime speed lines with them basically just doing their normal sprites. It's nothing too crazy. I mean, I'm not the biggest fan of this because, again... It's basically just using the sprites for this one. I feel like they could have done something more original, maybe had a bunch of close-ups of them flying together, something like that. But it's not the worst thing, again, for a unfeatured banner unit, right? So we have them fly in to attack the enemy, right? Shukesh, about a headbutt, my man, right? Comes in and immediately kicks him. As well, we also have Tora join him for the kick in the beginning. A very old looking Dokkan effect in the middle here, but these little like lightning bolts, even though they're not actually lightning bolts, it's just supposed to be like the impact of the kick, are definitely new and kind of interesting that they combined that with that older looking um, effect piece. They also basically just have them stay in this kick pose. Shugesh, bye! <laughs> basically just follows the enemy. Again, isn't this isn't like a Dokkan Fest unit, so I'm not going to be as critical of it, but it is a little bit of a shame that it is basically just the frame by frame for their poses changing, right? We then go over to Fasha, who comes in with some anime speed lines, and her key is charging in her hand, which the key looks okay, even though it is just a circle. 
<laughs> Poor Ghost looks really funny here, I'm not gonna lie. Obviously, with his mouth beam charging, there is a little bit of movement on his arms, as you can see, which is nice. Obviously, adding in a little bit of that minimal movement that we really like. A very cool shot from the back where you can see both of them charging their attacks. Very interesting. This is a very good showing of like how different these are. And it's cool to see the little key effects sort of like zooming into Fasha's attack where we have it almost like charging outward. You can see the little like dashes shooting off of Borgos's attack as well. Nice attention to detail on that for sure. We basically have a, a one and a two essentially, right? So we have the back, right? And then bam, and then bam, their arms are out, right? to fire the blast, a beam coming from Borgos and a ball from Fasha as it explodes on the enemy. The explosion effect may be something a little bit older, but I do like these little bits of like ash almost, or just like explosion effect off of the character. I think that is a nice little touch too. We have Tora come up from the ground, right? A little bit of movement on his arms there, which is very nice to see. A cutaway to a better shot of Tora. This is definitely where the budget went for the super attack. It's really interesting for this one as well, because for this, right, they have this wind-up shot, right? And then they have him swipe forward with these nice speed lines, right? He stops, and then immediately, right, after he sort of stops midway, right? Well, I guess it's not immediately, but, like, they have him pause and then immediately punch is what I meant to say, like, after the pause, right? So it's kind of interesting that there's nothing in between. I kind of like this, right? I think that maybe there definitely could have been, well, not maybe, there definitely could have been some more in-between frames for this, but I almost kind of like how this feels with the impact because it's like, he's like, oh, bam, you know, type of thing. So I don't know, I kind of like this. I don't know if it was supposed to be like that, but I do kind of like the way that it ended up, if I'm being honest with you. We also have a little bit of a follow through on the arm too from Tora which is also nice to see. We have the card art there, which honestly, this card art kind of feels a little bit empty. It almost kind of feels like Bardock is supposed to be right here or something like that. Maybe if they move this card art a little bit to the left, it wouldn't feel like that as much. But then we have the shot of Tora swiping his hand forward, which by the way, fun fact, um, if memory serves, this is literally just the R Tora, except the updated version of it, which I mean makes sense because that's what that card art was based off of this specific scene. But it's just kind of funny to see some really older Dokkan art sort of updated unintentionally, right? We have him though, swipe his hand forward, which this looks really, really nice, right? Unfortunately, there isn't as much like animation in between, but again, unfeatured unit um, before the white sort of starts there. And I do like this very interesting like white effect i guess you would say as it kind of like shines on his armor and his hair it almost looks like he's made of glass and then this happens which is kind of weird if i'm being honest with you but i mean you know it's okay definitely not too bad it's it's an all right way to do a key blast effect we have this sort of white blast hit the enemy with them flying away as it fades to white and the bardock squad coming to a standstill here this will be a pretty cool ko screen as well um but this is just a sprite for shugesh whereas these are new assets of them standing there i do like this explosion effect by the way this definitely could pass for like water splashing up but I really, really like this explosion effect. I think it looks cool. And there's also the little bits of debris coming off of this as well. Okay, so we now move in to Bardock's intro, which by the way, if you have not watched this animation yet, I encourage you to watch it literally just for the OST because oh my gosh, the intro OST is so good. So this is a really cool like sequence of events as they have it here right you have bardock breathing very very heavily here right a very nice shot of him breathing heavily right you can see sort of the like images the <laughs> i can see the future i had to make the reference at least one time in this video you know i did <laughs> right the little spike of the vision about to come into his memory right a very nice impact frame to sort of represent this like taking over his mind right you can see the white um little line there sort of dash across the screen bardock looking horrified frankly um and looking up and this is really cool because so this goes up and immediately we go into this almost dreamlike state throughout this entire animation it has this very nice effect of sort of this like warm filter almost like this fuzzy kind of like memory dream vision sort of filter right i think that they absolutely nailed the sort of like 
almost hallucinogenic state that Bardock is in with this animation, right? I think they did a good job of that. Even the shading on the characters, right? This little glow that they do on Goku, right? Where they have him, you know, sort of like glow into Frieza. That works perfectly, right? Having Frieza fade in like this, where Bardock's like, oh, oh, <laughs> right? This all, I think, captures that sort of mindset that Bardock is in, because obviously he doesn't understand what's going on with these visions that he's seeing at that point. Very, very well. I think they did a good job with that for sure. However, obviously, let's talk about the nitty gritty of this animation itself, right? I just wanted to kind of go over that in a more general sense because I think they did a good job with it. So, first of all, some really great perspective on this one. Absolutely, they nailed it with the, like, what looks a lot closer to the audience and what looks a lot farther. You can even see Goku fades into frame here, right? You can see that he comes into focus, which they have done this on some Dokkan animations before but I think they really nail it here this is like perfect Bardock even goes out of focus as Goku comes into focus for that shot very very well done if I do say so myself we do cut to Bardock lifting his hand up and I gotta say this part is really good with him lifting his hand but this is a very jarring change I have to say right going from this to this is very weird I think it's definitely partially because his hair has such a drastic change right you go from these two big head spikes here to basically one and then that other one being sort of merged with that other one i understand that it's supposed to be like the perspective that you're looking at his hair but it's still very jarring going from this to this i think it doesn't help as well that there is a clear art style difference in between these two shots right like they look like they could maybe be from the same scene but this has a lot thicker black lines to it right it has a lot different shading a lot darker shading in a lot of areas than this one does right a lot of lighter shadows here the lines are a lot less dark and also just the shape of his head in general definitely looks looks a lot different there. It's just a very weird transitional shot, right? I think it doesn't help that his hair overall looks a lot bigger here before we get to this shot where it looks a lot smaller, right? But after that sort of jank transition, I do really like the rest of this. The petals floating by look really, really good. I think they did a very good job with those, right? Bardock sort of reaching out looks really, really cool, right? You can see a lot of nice minimal hand movement here. I want to get that in actual slow-mo, right? Look at his fingers as they sort of like adjust a little bit. I think that looks really nice. That's sort of Bardock like, oh, 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 you know, that kind of like anime stuttering, like stunned sort of thing, right? I think they absolutely nail that pretty well. Now, this with the hand is a little bit weird here because I think that the zoom in is okay. But then once we get to about here, things start to get a little bit weird because this almost looks like too big for the perspective. Obviously, this is supposed to be the type of thing where you're closer to his hand so it looks bigger and Bardock looks farther away, right? However, this transition from this hand to this hand not it in my opinion i think there definitely should have been him actually opening his fingers right because the weird thing about this is we saw that just moments ago where it looks like that his fingers are actually moving as fingers would right where his hand actually like opens up a little bit right and his fingers move a little bit more properly but then we have just this <laughs> this is literally going to be that vibe check the <sighs> meme <laughs> when bardock's hand is like zooming towards the camera um, but yeah, I don't know. The jank hand transition is just a little bit jarring for me personally. We do have it zoom a little bit farther into the camera. His hand shaking a little bit. I think they do a good job of that for sure. You know, emphasizing that sort of like what's happening type of thing, right? We have Bardock's hand reaching out for Goku here. Again, a very nice shot of Goku coming into focus once again. This shot of Goku turning around, I think is basically perfect right they do a very good job of having him actually turn around it looks a little bit weird in the two times speed but i think for the most part right if we take a look at this in the regular um with him turning around it actually looks pretty fluid right there is maybe a little bit of choppiness in there but i think it kind of adds to the sort of like ambiance of what's happening in this sc this screen this scene right where it's sort of like you know he's turning around very slowly almost like slow-mo in bardock's mind right there maybe could have been some more frames in there but overall i think it's okay 
This, though, with Goku sort of turning into this white or like kind of bright light sort of thing, right? I think that that definitely looks really, really good. Right, this sort of like flash almost, this flash of white light that sort of envelops Goku as he's just sort of bright and it's kind of like hazy as it turns into Frieza, right, with Frieza fading in, right? Frieza also coming in, faded in, and then his asset actually fading into focus here, right, I think looks really, really good. I think they definitely did a good job with that. Um, I want to see that in the slow-mo speed right where Frieza phases in and then comes into focus I think that shot looks really good too um I do kind of wish that they did something where like Goku almost morphed into Frieza or something like that but I'm sure that the reason why they did it like this is because this is how it looked in the original anime so you know again where the anime has some shortcomings I don't want to you know blame Dokkan for those shortcomings for sure we have a quick cut over to Bardock, and I have to say, with this shot of Bardock here, this is actually a very good use of very quick, snappy changes in emotion. I think sometimes with Dokkan animations, the emotion changing looks a little bit janky when it's so quickly, but this literally Bardock is just basically losing his mind, right? He sort of snaps in this moment, right? Because this is, you know, he's just trying to understand the situation. I think the eye close and his mouth opening right with his face sort of extending here looks great. I definitely like this shot a lot. Now, this shot here, this is a very interesting shot to me, right? We have Bardock then kind of being enveloped in this red light, you know, as he's sort of realizing the vision that he's seeing with the rocks breaking around him. I do like the minimal movement that they have on him, right? As he's sort of rising up, you raise me up, <laughs> right? It is a little bit interesting that in the very beginning of this, it's a little bit janky, right? You can see that as the rocks are sort of forming, right? Bardock's arms look like they're in a little bit of a weird position. Uh, is it before this where his arms kind of change a little bit? Yeah, you can see like his pose changes right there. I feel like they should have changed it after the rocks covered him. Like once the rock was right here, then they should have done the pose change because then it wouldn't be as noticeable with his hands changing so drastically, right? Even going from this to this, right? I think that there definitely should have been a lot more here, right? Even like an asset fade, I would have preferred from it just going from this very dark shot to this very light shot of the light kind of enveloping him as he's being hit with this. Now, the other thing that I wanted to note about this particular scene is it's incredibly strange that they did this from so far away because usually this is the part where Bardock is like super close up if memory serves, right? It's just kind of weird that they did this shot so far away. I, I Lately, I feel like Dokkan has been doing that where there's some shots that I feel like should be pulled in a lot for the animations and they are really far away. Why? I don't know. Um, but nonetheless, the shot looks pretty good overall. I do like as well. I'm, I'm not really a fan of like how it just cuts back to Bardock's face. I kind of wish there was another transition there, right? I mean, to be fair, I guess it makes a little bit more sense because obviously it's him sort of realizing what's going on, right? But I really like this because, right, Bardock is lifting up his head, right? And you finally get to see where he actually is, which is on the balcony. Obviously, this takes place after he tries to convince the Saiyans to join him against Frieza, right? But what I really like about this animation is that in the beginning, you don't actually see him standing on the balcony, right? You basically get this like close-up shot of Bardock here, right? And then the little twing, right? You can kind of see the background is gray, which is like the opening that's behind Bardock when it actually goes to, you know, him there. But this animation is really cool because you sort of don't know what's going on if this is a dream or not. I mean, obviously, if you watch the anime, you know, but it kind of feels like you almost get into Bardock's mindset a little bit um, with how they have this set up, which I think is really cool. I don't know if that was intentional or not, but good job. <laughs> Nonetheless, though, um, obviously, this shot of him on the balcony looks really, really nice. Even his hands moving here, like, they did so good on animating this section. Like, this section of it looks so nicely animated. All of the arm movement looks really, really nice. The lighting in the background popping up. Oh, man, that looks so good. Obviously, Bardock's, um, 
almost said enthusiasm, I mean, I guess so, his, you know, will to change the future increasing exponentially in this moment, right? Looks so good. Let's see this on the normal time speed, right? Like, this is perfect with his arm movement, right? And they nail the exact point where he needs to close his hands, right? When he brings his hands together and then snaps them closed, right? Absolutely perfect. They nail this section. This probably like the best looking section in the whole thing, if I have to be honest with you. It looks so good. Okay, so this animation is very weird to me, first of all, because this is him flying up to kind of fight the enemies but it's not like everything that happens in this scene as far as i remember which i think is a little bit weird um bardock also coming up from the ground what is this pose why are his arms as long as his legs what is happening in this scene my man looks like a giant mecha robot he looks like a Megazord or something, or like Bardock drawn by a five-year-old. Why are his arms longer than his legs? I don't understand. Why is this so ugly? Who drew this, bro? They didn't get the B team. They got the janitor to draw this shot, bro. Oh, God. I, I don't know. That's a little, that's a little, that's a little weird. I ain't even going to front with you. The key, though, thankfully, does look pretty good as Bardock is flying up towards the sky. I will say, the one thing that is a little bit strange about this is Bardock's face looks this very weird angle the whole time. I think it is kind of like this in the movie, where it is this sort of, like, odd look to his face of, like, at this specific angle, but I feel like it just still looks not quite right. Um, nonetheless though, nice shot of his hair flowing there. Definitely like that. The zoom in is pretty nice, right? We have a shot of the card art here. I didn't even notice all the Frieza villains in the background. That's cool. So we have him fly up towards the sky. That's a good transition, by the way. Having a transition from him like flying up from the planet, basically. This, <laughs> this literally looks like Astro Boy. That's what it looks like. I was trying to put my finger on it. But anyway, him flying up from the planet, right? And then having the card art be the transitional piece into him actually flying up into space. Definitely a very nice transition there for sure. So yeah, we have Bardock now fly into space. His arms not as long as his legs this time. This looks pretty cool. His hair is moving there. I know it's a little bit difficult to see on that very dark background. But yeah, his hair is definitely fluttering in the wind. <laughs> is there wind in space? I don't know. I'm not an astronaut. But... We have this little effect here, which is kind of interesting that this is supposed to like represent him kind of moving faster, right? I think it looks good, not when it first starts up, right? Like here, it looks a little bit strange, right? But then once you're like here, it looks pretty good because it's almost like he's breaking the sound barrier. And then you have these sort of like wind assets, right? That are sort of like the whoosh behind him. I think that does look pretty cool. So we have Bardock fly up towards the sky here. I will say... I wish this was a little bit better done, right? It's kind of already a little bit, like, I don't know, too zoomed in on the enemy sprite. It's going to be interesting to see how this looks with other kinds of sprites, too, um, since this is, like, basically the enemy. Um, I think it's also weird because, of course, this whole scene is Bardock fighting a bunch of the Frieza soldiers. And since you only fight, like, one enemy at a time, I don't mean, like, when there's two enemies in the st stage. I mean, like, when you're using a super attack you're only fighting one enemy right excuse me so it's kind of going to be a little bit of a weird one but we have bardock flying up again that little wind effect right the asset doesn't actually change here right it's basically the same they do finally twist it a little bit to kind of try and emulate some movement right there is a little bit of a change here you can see his arms and his legs do change a little bit but this sprite to character ratio oh, i hate that word <laughs> is very weird right like it looks like that bardock is way too big like it looks like this guy is super tiny right like it looks like that this guy is way smaller than he actually is because of like the way that this is formatted right obviously once bardock finally hits him it looks a little bit more natural but still not like crazy good i also wish there was definitely more wind up in this than quite literally just smacking into the enemy right 
I wish there was definitely a little bit more animation in that. Um, I do like that there is this little bit of follow through here, right? Where they kind of make Bardock a little bit bigger and they actually do move his arm and leg a little bit, right? I think they definitely do a good job with that for sure. So we have Bardock follow through, right? With another punch here, his hair kind of fluttering, which I do like that. A kick as well. And then a roundhouse kick. Again, the weird thing about this, right? And we'll get to this section. is just this is supposed to be him attacking a bunch of different enemies. But because you only fight one enemy per, like super attack right i mean i guess unless it's an aoe but you understand what i'm trying to say this feels really weird because obviously this should be him beating down a bunch of the different frieza soldiers but it's just one guy so i'm sure that also kind of makes this feel a little bit weird i do like him pushing it up right i wish there was a little bit more animation in between all these punches right maybe the first one needs a little bit more but i will say after that one right definitely the quick movements i think is pretty good like i do like this punch being quick to this i do think that that's pretty nice right definitely shows how quickly bardock is fighting you can also see his leg moves a little bit there which is nice too really wish there was more on this wind up here because it kind of looks like he sweeps his leg this way right like he almost turns it right rather than spinning all the way around which i assume they're trying to insinuate right to him then following through although then they go back i don't know that's a little bit janky for sure right maybe he did move it right then because you would think it would go all the way around again because now his heel is, you know, flying backwards against the enemy, right? A little bit of minimal movement in the arms, which is good. Definitely needs some more frames in between this whole section, basically, right? Like all these poses, basically, except for like the punch into the elbow, right? Everything else I think could use a bunch of different frames and a lot more animation in between to sort of make it feel a lot more fluid, right? Absolutely. So then we have Bardock fly up towards the sky, which is basically just a solid PNG, um, except for obviously the end here. Um, ooh, some typing slashes in the search bar. <laughs> um, except for the end here, right, when Bardock gets really close to the screen here, right, obviously his face changes a little bit there. His hair definitely looks a little bit weird, but I have a feeling that, again, this is the reason why is because, you know, it looks like this in the anime. Um, but yeah, his face sort of changes to this super screaming face here as he gets a lot closer to the enemy. Oh, yucky sprite. <laughs> you see this fist, which I actually think Bardock's arm here looks really solid. I think they animated this pretty well. Very interesting that you see the light coming off of this too, right? Like this is where it's kind of forming. And then the light shining off of it, right? As the ball begins to form, kind of starts early, which is interesting. Obviously, we have this blast against Bardock, right? Or from Bardock hand right blast against the enemy i should say and i think that does look pretty good his face here Ooh, it's giving me a little bit of that uh agl super saiyan goku and vegeta vibes with his uh, active skill when he throws the ball at metal cooler face looks a little bit weird here again i wonder if this specifically is like they tried to match this to the movie or if this was just not some great like facial structure design on their part but anyway this looks more like bardock even though it's a little bit more that weird angle that we were talking about before um i still think that it definitely looks a lot better than what was there before the hair moving is nice right definitely very cool this section i will say i definitely quite like even though it's a bit weird that it goes from like one frame to another with the lighting like that because you would think that the shadow would be there the whole time because obviously the key ball is like in his hand but i definitely like the shading that they picked for bardock here once it actually happens and this looks super good right once he actually fires the ball which to be fair um i definitely like that little impact frame where they sort of have it like glow blue right on the whole screen right oh my gosh <laughs> maybe epilepsy warning that <laughs> that's hard for me to look at um the white flash, right? And then immediately it goes into this where you can actually see like the enemy sprite silhouette basically fade away right into the blast. Definitely very, very cool. For me as well, with this animation, I think the other thing is, is that it feels very like cut short. Like re-watching this whole thing, maybe it's just because this scene is so elaborate with Bardock fighting all of the different like enemies, right? Like basically fighting all the different Frieza soldiers as he's trying to make his way up the Frieza. But it feels like it's way too short for this scene, right? 
Again, I think it may just because be because, excuse me, there's so much going on, and because they can only have them fight one enemy, they kind of have to cut it short. But, man, I wish that there was some way to have him, like, fight multiple enemies. It would be really cool if you were doing, like, an AoE or something like that, if they had, like, a different version of the Super where Bardock attacked a bunch of the different enemies. That would be really sick, but obviously I don't think that they have the technology to do that um, with, you know, how, like, Dokkan's base code is, basically. But anyway, um, let's take a quick drink of water. Hydrate, ba hydrate break, baby. Hydrate or dehydrate. And let's move in to the active skill, the final section of our journey here today. So we have Frieza's pod hovering in the sky over the planet Vegeta here, right? A very nice little, very subtle, I don't even know if I'll be able to like get this with the zoom, but there is a very subtle movement to the atmosphere, right? Like you can kind of see it getting a little bit closer to Bardock. It's really hard to tell. Let me get the regular time speed, but you can definitely see it, right? There's just a tiny bit of movement, right? You can kind of catch it there. It's really hard to see, right? But it's definitely there, that little bit. Whoop! Very nice little touch to make this feel very animated. I am extremely pleased with this section, though, I will say. I definitely like the way that they kind of made Bardock look here. Very, very nice looking. I think it looks just like the anime, right? I definitely like that they didn't skimp out on the fruit punch as well, because sometimes modern Dragon Ball does that, but Dokkan keeping it real with the fruit punch all over my mans, right? It looks really, really good. Him talking looks pretty good, too. Obviously, the space background here looks very, very nice as well. We do have this cut to the shot of Bardock up above, and you can see the planet below, which is pretty cool. I will say, the one weird thing about this shot, and I think that this is, again, maybe more of a thing of the anime than Dokkan, but it is kind of weird that, like, Bardock's hair here looks like it fits his head, and then his hair here looks like he's almost wearing, like, a giant cartoon <laughs> wig, almost. And then when it cuts to here, his hair looks like the normal size again. Kind of weird, but just something that I thought I would point out, because obviously, you know, it's worth pointing out since this is a video about him. But yeah, this talking looks pretty good. Um, I also like the little bit of hand movement that they have where Bardock's sort of like twitching, right, with how angry he is, you know, getting ready to fire the key blast. I do kind of wish that they had him like close this hand, since obviously it goes from open palm to close. That might, again, also be the anime. Um, but... Um, this is very interesting. I am quite curious when this actual data download happens. If Bardock here, with how he looks, is just a zoomed out version of this, right? This is such a high quality asset and this looks so nice. It's kind of hard to tell if this is the same asset as this one, right? Obviously the mouth flaps are different. Um, you know, when he's talking, but I do wonder if this is going to be two different pieces or one. If it is too, they definitely do a good job masking how like blurry this should look with how zoomed in because this looks pretty good if I do say so myself. I think the other thing that helps is they go from zoomed in to zoomed out. So if it is the same asset, then of course it's going to look even better. Whereas like when we looked at Gamma 1 recently, right, they zoomed into that asset. So it kind of looked a little bit yuckier. But anyway, we have it zooming out on Bardock here with him still talking, right? We have the key ball, of course, begin to form in his hand. Oh my gosh, dude, the impact frame is so sick. I really, really like how this forms in Bardock's hand. It looks really, really nice. Let me get to the part where it actually begins to form. Yeah, so it begins as like this little ball, right? I like that it's also not a perfect circle. It's kind of like a little bit of jagged, not jagged, but like, you know, kind of jagged edges, but they're rounded. That didn't make any sense at all. But you know what I mean? It's not a perfect circle because it's more like energy, right? We have this little explosion effect, which is super nice. Look at this sick impact frame, bro. Ooh, raw. <laughs> that is really cool. And the little circle in the middle kind of emphasizes that too. We have the white and then of course this super nice key ball. I like how this looks a lot. I think they did a very good job with this, how it's glowing. Bardock's hand also looks perfect as well with the key sort of enveloping it. I really, really like the look that they sort of gave this very, very much. I like the little white flashes as well throughout this too. I think that sort of emphasizes like the power that's sort of emanating from Bardock in the scene, right? Very, very nice. It's also interesting too that they have the text sort of fade out for the sound effect there. I think that's interesting. 
Okay, so now we get to the Magnum Opus, right? We get to Bardock about to throw the Key Blast here. So a very nice zoom in. I will say his fingers are a little bit weird, but I mean, that's kind of passable because obviously that's like sort of how they look. He lifts his hand up and I think that this does look pretty good. There could definitely be a couple more in between frames here, especially here when he's whipping his hand back, right? Like going from this to this is definitely a little bit jarring. It's a little bit more not as noticeable because you're kind of distracted by the fact that like the blue light is in your face. So you kind of don't notice it as much. But moving his hand, right? I definitely feel like at some parts of this, it's a little bit more robotic, right? Where it almost just looks like someone's taking like a PNG on a stick and then rotating it. Once they get to the end, it feels a little bit more natural. It's also kind of weird that they jump cut from here to here, right? Where they go from Bardock's arm to him coming into frame. I guess there can't really be that many frames in between that, but it still feels like a little bit of a jump to me. Um, we do have a very nice perspective, though, on Bardock's face, right? Sort of zooming back from the key going to um, his face now in the frame, right? This facial expression change, I think it's just fine because obviously he's, you know, literally screaming for his life, basically, um, in this scene, right? We have him wind up the shot. I think this little bit of movement here is nice. Definitely a very good spot to cut. This looks weird because it's almost like his head is cut off, but you know, it's just not in the frame, right? But I definitely like this sort of like this whole sequence the way they do it. Zooming into Bardock's face, right? Um, they zoom in a little bit more, right? To zoom past it, right? The anime motion lines. You can see that they stretch his arm. That is so cool, right? We've talked about this before. This is a little bit of a animation technique, I believe. Again, not a professional animator, but animation smearing i believe is what this is called because in full motion it gives it like the illusion that it's moving right even though obviously when you pause it frame by frame my man's looking like the road runner out here <laughs> my man's looking like a looney tunes character straight up but this is really cool to see because obviously this is not something that you would notice or appreciate you know if you aren't like dissecting this type of thing right so very very cool the throw itself again this is a super great transition by the way going from like the front of bardock to now you're behind him right as he actually throws the key ball right and that looks really good the execution of that is nice there's even some follow through on bardock as you can see right there right he sort of shimmies a little bit and you can see that the bandana moves and his hair moves a little bit as the ball actually approaches frieza there i just want to show you this in full motion here too with him actually throwing it it just looks really nice. I think definitely out of everything in the active skill, this actual whole sequence of the throw right here is like just so nice. It just looks so good. As soon as they zoom into Bardock, right? Oof, so good looking if I do say so myself. Very, very nice section of that animation there for sure. We have the ball approach Frieza. You can see the funny sprite there. It's weird that his arms are up, but again, funny Dokkan sprites. The blue light sort of envelops the sky there and obviously the light from bardock's key there too um, excuse me we have a white flash here as it makes impact with the enemy and the speed lines flying across the screen uh, there excuse me oh my gosh that's my smoothie from earlier we have the enemy begin to fly away as the lines get thinner and thinner and they have it basically just turn into white with the lines sort of dissipating it's interesting that they don't do the thing where i mean literally they did it in bardock's super attack before um, where when he, you know, supers the enemy and they basically, like, disintegrate, you can actually see them, you know, basically, like, disintegrate. It's interesting that they didn't do that for um, the animation with this here, right? It's basically just a white flash that envelops the screen. But yeah, the explosion effect, oh, by the way, I'm so glad that they had it fade from white because I talk about that all the time where they just cut and it looks so disgusting. So fading from white, good job. Very good job for sure. So yeah, the fade from white, the explosion effect looks really, really good if I do say so myself. They did a good job of mixing this like key and sort of smoke coming off of Frieza. Obviously, this is supposed to kind of be like if Bardock won, or I guess maybe this is just seconds before he goes, uh-oh, Frieza's still alive. <laughs> but yeah, very, very good effect there. I like that a lot. And I will say, I like him closing his hand for the KO screen there, but I will say, I'm not the biggest fan of how Bardock looks here definitely not the greatest in my opinion it's not even really like his proportions do look maybe a little bit weird like with his arms i think but overall just it feels so static his arms feel way too stiff for how he should be 
I don't know. It, it's just not my favorite thing. I know a lot of people were also kind of like really wanting the fighters one where, you know, when he defeats Frieza in the dramatic finish where he goes Super Saiyan, where he holds out the bandana, right? I understand they want this to be a little bit more faithful to the original, so that makes sense to me, but it still would have been cool to include. Um, now, I will say, despite me not really being a fan of how Bardock looks here, the background looks really good, the space looks really good, and I have to point this out because actually a homie of mine pointed this out when I was in the VC with the boys when this animation dropped. This little light in the background is actually Goku's pod flying away from planet Vegeta and going to Earth, which is a very nice little touch. As you can see, the sort of star as it looks to be sort of fades away into the night sky because obviously that is Goku's Saiyan pod getting farther and farther away from a planet or from a planet, from the planet rather, excuse me. Very, very nice attention to detail on that for sure. I really, really like that they included that because that could have been something that was easily overlooked. I feel like one of the designers was like, hey, yo, bro, wouldn't it be sick? And they were like, yeah, let's put that in. <laughs> so definitely glad that they included that for sure. But that is going to do it for Bardock's animations. So how do I feel about these overall? To be honest with you, this is actually one of those times where after doing the animation analysis video, I think I actually like these animations better. I feel like most of the time, either my opinion kind of stays the same or sometimes gets worse when I analyze these. But I feel like after analyzing these animations, I actually like them a little bit more. There is definitely a lot more intricate details in here that I did not notice before, right? There's definitely a, li a lot of nice attention to detail in certain things. There's a lot of great execution in a lot of the scenes, right? I think that not only is this sort of held back a little bit by... I know that the original animation, I think, for this movie wasn't necessarily the greatest... Like, comparatively to all the Dragon Ball films, so I'm sure that didn't help either. But the fact that the super attack also holds back the animations a lot because, of course, he's fighting all these multiple guys and you're fighting one guy in the animation doesn't really help either. Um, overall, I think this guy's animations are pretty good. I would not say that they're anything super spectacular. They don't blow me out of the water by any means. I still think that the intro is really good and I really like the way that it's executed with these sort of dreamlike effects almost. I think they did a very good job on that, that like hallucinogenic sort of state that Bardock's in when he's seeing the future, right? I think they really nailed the feel of that very, very well. I am still pretty excited for this Unat. Unat? <laughs> I guess so. Bardock is my favorite Dragon Ball Z character, so anything that comes from bardock right i'll be happy to throw a couple of stones on regardless even if it isn't necessarily the best animations i think the basically final thought on this is that these are just good right i don't think that they're bad i don't think that they're super great maybe except for the intro and like some of the the in-between stuff that i pointed out but i don't think that they're spectacular but again, like I said, definitely not bad animations by any means. I still like them. Again, I can definitely put aside my sort of what I would consider objective look at them in terms of like the animation and the technical aspect of it to me enjoying it, right? Because it's Bardock, I'll still enjoy it anyway, even if they were really bad. <laughs> Which they're not, so that's good. Um, but regardless, though, I feel like I can still separate them and enjoy the animations for what they are, even if they aren't the most technically sound, right? But I want to thank you guys so much for watching. Of course, let me know what you think of these in the comment section below. Let me know if you are excited for this unit. I'm excited to see what this guy can do, too, because obviously, like I said, I really like Bardock. So hopefully, he's a pretty good unit. But I want to thank you guys so much for watching. I will catch you in the next one. Dokonasa's out. Peace.